From the waters of Palawan, let's move down south over to Cagayan de Oro where the local government has declared a state of emergency after a contractual dispute over the city's water supply came to a head. Mobile journalist Francis Orsho is in Cagayan de Oro and has the story. The dispute stems from a long-standing agreement between the city's water district or COWD and distributor CDO Bulk Water Inc. or Kobe. Kobe said the water district has an unsettled balance amounting to over 470 million pesos, which the city is refusing to acknowledge, much less pay. Because of this, Kobe said it may be forced to stop supplying water to Cagayan de Oro. On May 1, Wednesday, CDO Mayor Rolando Uy declared a state of emergency, deploying police to guard water facilities and mobilizing its incident management team. In a statement, Kobe said they remain committed to providing safe drinking water to CDO residents, but that negotiations failed to get anywhere because of the lack of representation from the side of the water district. Kobe has yet to proceed with a disconnection and says it's still hopeful for a resolution. But the local government is already making other plans. Tuloy pa rin ang contingency plan natin at saka yung resolution na inaaprobahan sa uh, City Council na magbigay ng pahintulot sa uh, kaudi na magbili ng purchase request o purchase order sa ibang mga bulk water supplier na kagayan di oro. If Kobe is forced to shut off supply, approximately 800,000 residents could face water interruptions. Sa tingin ko, kailangan bayaran nila yan. Kasi pag hindi nila binayaran, wala kami tubig dito. Paano kami magkakat tubig? Para bang it's uh, perplexing knowing na hindi mabayaran yan. May pera naman ang COWD in Cagayan de Oro, mobile journalist Francis Orsho, we are One News. To help shed some light on this issue, we have spokesperson, a spokesperson from Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated, or COBE. COBE is a unit of Metro Pacific Water, and joining us tonight is Attorney Rob Rodrigo. He's the legal head of Metro Pacific Water. Uh, Attorney Rob, good evening. Thanks for making time for us tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Right, so it's a quite a complicated issue, but the crux of the matter seems to be the city's outstanding debt to Kobe. First off, I wanted uh, to get the facts straight. What is the actual figure? I'm seeing some reports say 479 million pesos, others say 426 million pesos. Yeah, okay, uh, the 426 million pesos is actually the figure from last year. Um, every month, uh, that figure actually grows and then they pay a little. Uh, the differential between the rate that they are paying and the rate that we are charging, uh, that's what causes the figure to bloat or to balloon. Um, as of today, I checked with our finances and it's at about 440 million. Uh, that's the correct figure right now. Okay, so 440 million pesos as of today. Uh, over yes. how long a period was this debt incurred and how many times have you tried to collect it? Well, it all began in uh, 2021, uh, where our contractual increase automatically kicked in. Um, at the time, uh, the Cagayan de Oro Water District, or CAUDI, actually asked us to defer collections of this increase uh, because of the pandemic, which we gladly did because we understood the situation and um, we understood that they had difficulties collecting from their customers as well because of the pandemic. Um, however, the agreement was only up to six months that we would defer the increase. Thereafter, the increase would kick in. We even wrote them a letter a couple of times, first uh, reminding them of the contractual increase, and second, confirming that we are deferring the six months, uh, deferring the increase to six months. Um, come the deadline, we wrote them another letter uh, informing them that we're imposing the new rate uh, in 2021, which they did not object at the time. So, unfortunately, at the time they stopped, uh, they, they did not pay the correct amount. They continued paying the outdated amount of uh, 16 pesos and 60 centavos per cubic meter, um, where the rate was uh, already increased to 20 pesos. 
All right, uh, Attorney Rob, it, it would also seem if you go through all the reports, especially uh, from this year, that there were a couple of attempts, multiple attempts by all parties to actually come to the negotiating table in good faith, at least in the beginning. So as far as Kobe is concerned, why did negotiations ultimately break down? What were the sticking points there and where are we at right now? Well, I wouldn't say there was actually negotiations in good faith. Um, there were a couple of times where we called for a meeting, we asked for a meeting, and um, they didn't show up. Uh, there were a few meetings where Lua uh, uh, already assisted us and facilitated the, the talks, um, but yet they were incomplete, so we were not able to get any resolutions from their board. Um, what's critical was the last meeting, the very last meeting on April 30, which was our deadline, um, Lua called for a special meeting, uh, for a face-to-face -face meeting down in Cagayan de Oro, where our representatives uh, flew down to Cagayan de Oro to meet with the water district members, and only one representative went. Um, it's for the past few months that we've been trying to negotiate with them, uh, we've been desperately reaching out and trying to ask for possible solutions that they may offer to us. In fact, uh, we weren't even asking for payment anymore. We were just asking for a formal recognition of the debt and uh, a clear plan on how they would uh, pay us. Um, unfortunately, even that they couldn't give. Um, what's peculiar is uh, a few meetings ago, in the presence of Lua, they actually admitted and acknowledged the debt verbally. Um, they also acknowledged that there was a contractual increase every year. and. At that time, they were, you know, they didn't say it was invalid. The only uh, outstanding issue right now is actually the interpretation of the parametric formula. How much should the increase be every year? And the sticking point actually there is just the application of the VAT. Mm -hmm. What yeah. were sorry? What were some of the reasons that, that you were given for uh, the lack of representation from their side? <laughs> the last uh, very crucial meeting is that. Um, they had prior commitments. That was the reason that they gave us during the last meeting, which is sad because um, our president uh, from Metro Pacific Water, our assistant vice presidents, we were fully represented during the meeting. They had to um, move their schedule down just to make it work, and they couldn't even give us the same consideration. But to be fair, did you give them enough lead time? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, this was actually an invitation from Lua, and um, they spoke to the general manager and one of the directors uh, directly uh, invited them. Um, I believe, I, I'm not exactly sure if the chairman of uh, Lua reached out to them, but he did reach out to us, which is why we made it a priority to make sure that we went. The, just to confirm, this was the ele April 11 or 12 meeting, right? It, this was the April 30 meeting, the April very last meeting, meeting we had. So the other yes. day, just the other day. Yes, okay. yes. Hey, Attorney, you mentioned about a price differential that they refuse mm -hmm. to pay. So taking a look at mm -hmm. the agreement, the, it seems that the supplier, uh, which is Kobe, is allowed to adjust the rates every three years based on average consumer price index. Is that correct? And that is accurate. What, what, what yeah. were your reasons for the price increase? Were they fair and reasonable? Well, these um, price increases were negotiated uh, at the beginning of the um, partnership. Uh, the increases take effect every three years. Um, it's based on a, an agreed parametric formula, which takes into account the inflation, um, the inflation rates, which are published by the PSA. Uh, we pretty much have very little or no control of uh, how much the increase will be because uh, it's pretty much controlled by the inflation rates that are published by, um, you know, government itself. Um, this was negotiated uh, by both parties before we entered into the contract. And this was even reviewed by the OGCC. Um, so all parties concerned, including the OGCC, saw that the contract was valid and uh, there was nothing really wrong with it. Okay, so uh, now that it has come to a head and the meeting the other day did did fall through. Uh, what's the next steps for Kobe? What are you guys eyeing? And now that there is a state of emergency, what's going to happen to Cagayan de Oro? 
Well, the water is still continuously being delivered to Cagayan de Oro Water District. Um, we, unfortunately, it, it, it has come to the point that uh, despite our efforts in trying to reach out with the water district, uh, it seems that they are unwilling to cooperate and uh, that they are not sincere with trying to find an amicable settlement of this matter. Um, it came to the point that our partners, uh, Rio Verde, what, uh, as I mentioned earlier, earlier the bulk uh, water supplier, and Kobe, uh, mutually agreed that uh, we would uh, suspend um, delivery of the water to Cagayan de Oro Water District until they could uh, come here with a certain plan on how they could pay us. Um, unfortunately, um, armed guards were deployed to the property. Um, they infiltrated the building and uh, they're preventing certain personalities from entering and actually getting access to uh, any valve that we could uh, shut down. So right now, uh, hopefully moving forward, we will try to make efforts and reach out to the water district and hopefully still try to find a way to make this work. Um, but of course, at the same time, simultaneously, we are already studying all our legal options on what we could do, especially with uh, what we believe it was an awful, unlawful use of uh, police power, um, and it was not properly implemented. And we, we actually fear for the safety of our people down there and the people of Rio Verde. And uh, would there be attorney? Uh, who do you? Who can you run to if you're a company in in this sort of situation? Is there some sort of a regulator? Is it their job? Uh, where can you run to? Well, uh, of course, the courts of law would always be an option. Uh, second, the regulator of uh, water in the Philippines is Lua in this case, um, which I believe they're also they have been facilitating our talks and they've been pretty much involved with the negotiations as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, they could also reach out to the water district that, you know, maybe, you know, convince them to come back to the negotiating table with us and uh, maybe continue our discussions, no? Um, but at this point in time, I really don't know how open the water district is to continue talks, considering that uh, they intend to go straight to Rio Verde to purchase uh, water. Um, I'm just hoping that the Water District and Rio Verde both know that uh, if such an event happens, there are le legal repercussions that uh, will take place. So just to make that very clear, even though things have come to a head and this issue has made it to the headlines, uh, Kobe, the supplier, is still willing to come back to the negoti negotiating table and talk yes, about this course. outstanding bill. Yes. Yes, because uh, the last thing we want, of course, is to um, stop giving the people of Cagayan de Oro water. That's the last thing we want. Uh, we're always open um, to listening to whatever the water district uh, may offer us. But unfortunately, unfortunately, they have, since uh, 2021, we haven't been offered anything substantial or anything at all. Um, they haven't even given us any firm uh, courses of action or proposals. So it's really tough for us also to uh, move forward with this. But of course, um, you know, coming from Metro Pacific, uh, we're always willing to listen. Naman. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to leave that there for now. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Attorney Rob Rodrigo, legal head of Metro Pacific Water. Joining us now over the phone is Cagayan de Oro, First District Representative Lord Dan Suan, Congressman Suan. Good evening. Thanks for being with us. Hello. Good evening. Uh, Congressman, uh, we were just talking to Attorney Rob Rodrigo, who's the head of uh, legal head of Metro Pacific Water. He said just two days ago, April 30, there was supposed to be a crucial meeting to which representatives from all sides of this issue were invited, including actually your office. Uh, did you attend, and what happened at that meeting? Yes, the meeting for last April 30, which my office also attended, and which, which was actually the deadline set by. Kobe before they would cut off the water supply. Yung water district po namin didn't even send the board of directors. Yung chairman lang ang pumunta. And you know, that meeting was crucial. Yun na sana yung tamang panahon para mapag-usapan ng problema at ma-come up ng compromise. Pinush po namin ng chairman sa Lua, yung, yung chairman ng water district na dapat pumunta lahat ng board of directors nila 
sa April 13 meeting kasi trabaho nila yun eh. Hmm. Pero yun, walang walang board of directors na dumating. Ang issue ba, Congressman, is pag walang board of directors, hindi sila maka-move forward? They can't make a decision? That's true. Hindi sila magagawa ng resolution because it requires a quorum. Ah, okay. So, kailangan ng quorum from the board of directors of COWD. That's true. Correct? Yes, that okay. is correct. Okay. So, pinaspon nyo na lang po yung meeting ulit? Hindi na siya, hindi na siya na-postpone kasi wala talagang, ano eh, wala na silang schedule for a following meeting. Okay. Um, Kong, uh, sa, pagka, sa pananaliksik namin, no, mukhang last year pa po ito, mukhang ma, ha, nasa isang taon na itong problema, paano po ito umabot no, hanggang sa puntong ito sa pagkakaalam ninyo? Actually, this year lang po akong um, na-involved dito sa issue ito. Kasi this was entirely between Kobe and the Water District. And It really stemmed from the unpaid debt ng Water District regarding Kobe. So, yun talaga, dun talaga nagsimula. Mm -hmm. Kong, we're taking a look at a report uh, from Sunstar, uh, and it says that Cagayan, based on the latest PSA data, is actually the second richest city outside Metro Manila. And we're showing that on our screens. Uh, that's the latest PSA data that shows that its GDP per capita, which measures the wealth of the economy per person, stands at almost 344,000 pesos in 2022. Yet, kanina nga po, eh, nabanggit sa amin na uh, ang utang ay nasa 400 40 million. 440 million in total. Bakit po kaya hindi po mabayaran yung outstanding debt? That's true. We're supposed to be the second richest city outside Metro Manila, but we have this problem with the most basic necessity, yung water. Um, I think this all stems from the inability of water district na to come to the table and negotiate wholeheartedly. Kasi hindi sila pupunta sa mga negotiation. Eh. Nakita ko yun uh, personally um, nung sa April 30 na meeting na hindi talaga sumupot yung mga board of directors nila. And I think a week before that, sinorse talaga namin yung chairman ng Water District na, ma'am, dapat nandun talaga yung mga board of directors mo. So um, their, their inability or unwillingness to actually talk about the problem, I think, That's mm -hmm. the cost of all of this. Uh, Empik Water uh, mentioned that uh, their price increases are because of uh, inflation and they have no control over it. What uh, Do you have any um, insight as to why uh, or what the issue is with the price differential? I, I'm not an expert on, on the computation of their, their prices, though, but I heard that it's related to inflation, but... I think that's one of the things that they should sit down and discuss and, you know, come up with a win-win solution. They should decide kung ano, talaga yung, kung ano talaga yung computation, kung may inflation ba talaga, and maybe just stick to the contract. All right. And then, um, si Mayor Uy, uh, of course, has repeatedly refused to acknowledge the debt. Uh, yun nga yung problem, as you pointed out. But he now says that he's looking at uh, tapping other suppliers in the city. And my question is, does he actually have the power to do so, considering that, uh, you know, the city government does not actually have direct control over COWD, the CDO Water District? Pwede ba yun? Yes, pwede naman ang mayor maghanap ng other water suppliers, but this is not an easy process. It takes time, probably months or maybe even a year or so. Um, kailangan din natin ng long-term solutions to the water problem in CDO. So, probably yun yung goal niya. By reducing the non-revenue water, which is at 50% right now. But we also need to to address the, the immediate problem. Because, frankly, yung threat ng Kobe of cutting water supply should not be taken lightly. Di naman natin pwedeng sabihin sa mga tao na, oh, mag tayo ng, ng water. And... Totoo, yung, yung mayor natin, um, the mayor does not have direct control over the water district. And, you know, to be clear, I just want Cagayan de Oro to not have water interruptions. Yun lang naman ang talagang gusto ko eh. 
So Water District needs to act independently of the mayor because they are independent of the city government. Right, um, Congressman. Um, Siyempre, naiintindihan natin medyo magulo yung issue. And at the end of the day, isa lang naman talaga yung nagmamatter, di ba? Na hindi maputol ang tubig dyan sa Cagayan de Oro. Now, you are the congressman of the 1st District. Um, we know that Kobe supplies 40% of the water in all of Cagayan de Oro City. Gano'n po kalaki ang apektado in terms of percentage sa distrito ninyo? And as a lawmaker, what options are open to you? na pwede mong gawin in your capacity since nasa legislature naman po kayo talaga and not with the local government? Yung, yung sa district ko, from what I know, paabot po ng 80% ng district ko ang affected pag mawalan ng water supply from Kobe. So that's why I needed to speak up and you know do everything I can to prevent water interruption in my district and possibly even in Cagayan de Oro. Mm -hmm. And as a lawmaker, you know, I would love this issue to be fixed between Kobe and Water District by themselves without intervention of LUA mm -hmm. or Congress. Pero I'm really thinking about um, bringing this to Congress through a legislative inquiry if they, are un if they are unable or unwilling to sit down and try to resolve this problem. Okay, and have you given yourself a deadline, Congressman, on when you might do that? <sighs> It was supposed to be this Friday, pero ang gulo na eh. Ang gulo, ang, ang bilis na mga pangyayari dito sa Cagayan de Oro City. So, I guess I'm, I'm giving myself until next week to see kung may, mm. may updates pa ba. But if not, then I will push through with asking for a legislative inquiry. Okay, and we will continue following this story. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Cagayan de Oro 1st District Representative, Lord and Suwan.